Hello, uh, my name is Sufika Wedin and today I would like to present about the discussion on Chongqing model and the future of China. Uh, briefly, the term Chongqing model refers to a set of social and economic policies implemented in Chongqing, China metropolis. The Chongqing model was categorized in part by increased state control and the promotion of new leftist ideology. Both Zilai terms in Chongqing began nearly 30 years after Deng Xiaoping reform and opening policies were uh, conceived, then inherited a nation in 1978 that had a planned economy structure and largely rural uh, population. Uh, firstly, as the reform in agriculture, this economic change was a feasible as a result of the gradual implementation of market reform began under Deng Xiaoping reform and opening policy. Rural reform began with the decollectivization of agriculture and the reintroduction of family farming. Then, China progressively opened up to the global capital. Deng Xiaoping established four special economic zones in the Guangdong and Fujian provinces, on the southeast coast of near Hong Kong and across the Taiwan Strait from Taiwan. These zones were exper experimental given the foreign investors favorable policy such as a reduced tax uh, rates, faster approval processes and exemption from the foreign exchange rule. Next, uh, the rise of new forms of ownership was added by the fiscal and political decentralization town and village firm TVE. John D had a local enterprise that provide off-farm industrial jobs across the countryside, rose substantially from the midst 1980s to the mid 90s, many people were shocked by how well this government-owned business performed. Over the time, the private sector gained a political acceptance as well. Faced with the political limitation and shortage of the capital, an entrepreneurial class emerged, relying on the informal funding and the seeking the protection from the local official informally, and straining the bounds of the legal uh, the legal regulations. The Republic of China joined the World Trade Organization in 2001 after a year of negotiation and the Chinese leadership committed to the uh, further liberalize and adopt rule-based trade and investment governance in return for the membership, while foreign investment and ownership was first confined to a special economic zone, SEZ. As a region battle for scarce capital, FDI extended over the Chinese mainland. China drew more FDI than any other developing nation, beginning in the mid-90s and rising following WTO accession. When China joined WTO in 2001, it accounted 4.4% of the global export. By 2011, China accounted for 10% of the global export. Between 2001 and 2011, Manufactured product accounted for the between 90% and 95% of the export, while raw material import nearly quadrupled as the proportion of overall imports. Export of technology and machinery also grew in comparison to export of less expensive items such as textile and toys. Export processing zone where imported uh, product and resources were converted to duty free into items for export, expanded throughout the nation, ensuring the export, uh, the export oriented group plants become the incorporated into development objective of every municipality. According to many within and outside China, this type of growth was only feasible by lowering the wages, uh, restricting the yuan of. Renewable appreciation (RMB). The yuan was not convertible, uh, convertible until 1994, when it was devalued from 5.4 to 8.3 yuan <laughs> to the US dollar. The yuan was uh, linked to the do uh, to the dollar until 2005, at which point it appreciated under policy of the managed flow. 
China population expansion and concentration of manufacturing have resulted in an unsustainable pace of natural resource consumption and air and water pollution. According to the many Chinese residents and politicians, forest and green land losses were projected to reach 30 uh, until 40 percent and 30 percent uh, until 50 percent respectively. While nation authorities increasingly place the premium of environmental conservation, many observers describe ongoing deterioration and resources used to the local governments that floated environmental rules in order to create growth. While the first two decades of reform emphasized increase the decentralization in China economic and political system, fiscal and monetary system changes in the 1990s re-centralized importance macroeconomic control mechanism. The CCC, the CCP for the abolish of two millennia oil agriculture tax in 2006, primarily in reaction to rising state society friction in rural China over the peasant saw as an onerous tax burden. As a result, local government battle for scale tax revenue and increasingly rely on additional budgetary income derived from sources outside. Then the tax system to satisfy fiscal obligation, a scenario political scientist, Lily side up, local government on shoestring. Land resources in China the state held all urban land while collective grouping of peasants organized into agricultural production cooperative during more collectivized agriculture era owned all rural land as the for inequality issues. The divide between rural and urban Chinese constitute a critical axis of inequality, even though the economic reform began in the countryside in 1978. Chinese city and urban inhabited reap of the greatest benefit. This imbalance was primarily as a result of a political institution, the hukou, or household registration system which existed in the China since 1950s, often compared to an apartheid pie system. The hukou system segregated the Chinese resident into a urban and rural areas limiting mobile, uh, mobility and the rationing access to the public good services like a pension, education, unemployment benefits and the opportunity to live and work in the cities. Next, I would like to pass to the next presenter for further information about the Chongqing's model and the future of the China. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mama Azabuddin Bin Suaini. My next point for the Chongqing model and the future of China, CCP biggest concern was probably its own corruption. According to some reports, it's no secret that corruption has eroded in popularity, perceptions, and prevail prevalence since the mid 1990s. The fact that China economic progress tended to be centered in the eastern coastal region was a major source of inequality. To yet, no fifth gener generation leaders such as Deng Xiaoping have given Xi and Li their blessing. As a separate policy making style, the CCP had long fostered local experimentation prior to reform, such as the collectivization and special economic zones. China media and academic held the Chongqing model debut in 2009 as a new economic road for the, for the country. At 2,300 square kilometers of rock terrain occupied the province level municipality of Shangqing, which had an estimated population of 28 million. Construction of three gorgeous dams in Shangqing resulted in huge central investment. In total, the project is expected to displace around 1.3 million people. Nearly a million of those individuals will be resettled there as part of its Open Up the Waste initiative. Beijing indicated that it, it intended to be investment to the country interior provinces. Chongqing new participatory Bozilai was appointed in 2007. He set policy objective for the city second 10 years in 2008. Leading development projects was the 1,200 square kilometer. 
National Development Zone known as the New Zone of Liangjiang. Man- manufacturers were enticed to migrate to Chongqing. Uh, by Chongqing, take advantage of the higher wages and the East Coast. There was a 10 billion rupee investment in infrastructure and land reclamation. Approximately 120,000 people were moved from the city between 2005 and 2007. As of 2012, Liangjiang accounted for 50% of Chongqing GDP, making it one of China's fastest growing industrial zones. 141,500 companies are headquarters in the city. Chongqing SOE Revitalization Initiative was launched in 2002 by Wang Kifan. His work consisted of re- reorganizing the asset of insolvent companies into more functional org- organization and merging similar business together. His, nation, his initial master plan called for the urbanization for 10 million Hukou holders by 2020 with an expenditure of 100 billion RMB. Chongqing began on a massive public housing development project in 2009. As a part of city housing plan, 30% of public housing will be reserved for migrant. Assalamualaikum, my name is Muhammad Juma al I will continue to summarize about the topic. So both Bu Zilai and the administrators of Chongqing had the same ambitions when it came to altering the province political culture as they did in economy. A total of nearly 10,000 persons were arrested as a result of the campaign, ranging from street thugs and business executives to police and judges. On that list was the director of administrative law, who was one of the 13 people that were executed. Red Song campaign of Bo Zilai was considered by many as a neo mayorist campaign based on public mobilization and cohesive participation. Guangdong model changes were often juxtaposed against Chongqing's form. Labor issues and land conflicts with migrants accounted for the majority of these large occurrences. During Wang Yang's ten- tenure, the government's policy was to resolve this dispute through economic and political liberalization. For years, the expansion from the CCP of Bo Zilai has been the subject of heated debate in China. Disagreements over China's future were expressed during the Chongqing model debate. Many people believe that the CCP would have to make tough choices if it wanted to continue to lead the economy. An alternative to bureaucratic socialism and the neoliberal neoliberal movement for a full-fledged transition to liberal market capitalism emerged as a direct result of the referendum. Hello, my name is Muhammad Izzat Shakirin bin Saharuddin. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Today I would like to present about the case study China Ambulance. Since the early 2000s, China export-led growth strategy had been eliminating major trade partners, especially the US and Europe. By 2005, China trade surplus with the United States had grown to $258 billion, while its overall current account surplus has reached $426 billion. When China did allow the yuan to appreciate beginning in May 2005, the yuan grew by almost 21% over the next three years. In 2008, China export shrank for the first time since 1978. In the first quarter of 2009, 
Chinese savings stood at 51% with consumption at 36%. As thousands of processing and assembly plants were forced to close, laying off as many as 20 million workers, $586 billion spending package designed to stimulate domestic consumption and investment provided a start. After growing at 9.4% annually for more than three decades, China had been the second largest economy in the world and Premier Wen Jiaobao proposed a number of initiatives but their possible implementation speed was In this case study also, we found entry into the World Trade Organization. During this period, China lowered its tariff considerably and been large-scale privatization of SOE and TVE. The annual review process, which exposed human rights issue, was a source of humiliation for the Chinese government. Officials anticipated that WTO membership would undo much of the institution apparatus of socialism. In this case study also, we found uh, three reforms. First reform is reform facilitating foreign enterprise in China. China committed to gradually grant foreign-owned company and joint venture full trading and distribution privilege. Telecommunication and insurance were opened right away followed by the bank. Foreign corporations were generally satisfied with this liberalization by 2006. However, banks' branching and retail operations were remain restricted. China continued to promote state-owned enterprise via subsidy and industrial regulation, limiting competition in the sector. Second reform is reform facilitating free trade. China promised to stop subsidizing export and curb domestic industry subsidies. China agreed to treat import items in the same way as domestic goods were treated. It took an excruciatingly long time for this provision to be implemented. Tariff on textile and vehicle remain high, while a tariff rate quota system in agriculture continue to wreak havoc on international food exporter. Third reform is systemic reform. A key concept of the World Trade Organization (WTO) was almost non-existent. Foreign foreign companies struggled to learn a new standard and remain vulnerable to custom agent arbitrary method in preventing import. Foreign intellectual property right protection was also a problem, problematic condition of Chinese law. In 2010, it was easy to find CD copies for a few dollars, software, software for $20, and fake Gucci bag and Rolex watch uh, for under $25. For the capital control, by 2001, China had tightened its capital account regulation with control in place of 11 out of the 13 major category of capital account transaction capital market security, money market instrument, commercial and financial credits, direct investment and direct investment liquidation, real estate transaction and personal capital movement were among the transactions. China's QFII program which began in 2003 was designed to enhance the country stock market. Foreign investor investment accounted for 3% of China's stock market value in 2007. Foreign investors also could only buy a local B-share denominated in foreign currency before 2003. Inflow of remittance more than tripled between 2001 and 2005, while outflow remained practically unchanged. In the late 2004, the Chinese government mandated that banks disclose remittance conversion over $10,000 and non-bank Chinese residents were forbidden from investing directly in stock outside of China until April 2006. In 2007, a pilot program permitted Chinese residents to open account at the Bank of China in Taijin branch and subsequently exchange yuan for Hong Kong dollar in order to purchase share on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. For consequence of WTO accession, after 2001, China annual economic growth rose from 8 to 9 percent and 10 to 11%. Labor intensive and low value added items were imported into the United States, Europe, and Japan. After 2004, more value added content such as electronic and power production equipment was put in these commodities. 
By 2010, China trade surplus had grown to $360 billion, accounting for 8% of GDP. China had a trade deficit with Asia by enormous surplus with Europe, Japan, and most notably, United States. As a result of its vast current account surplus and massive direct investment inflow, China foreign exchange reserve increased quickly. By 2010, China foreign exchange reserve were estimated to be worth more than $2.8 trillion with about 66% denominated in dollars. The China Investment Corporation was created in 2007 with $200 billion in funding to engage in global sh- Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Ahmad Khabib bin Muhammad. Assalamualaikum. I will continue to the financial crisis. Financial crisis is the subprime mortgage market in the United States was severely affected by the global crisis that began in 2008. As we all generally know that in 2008, we just passing through a hard time, what we call as recession time. Not just that, China also being influenced in the recession time while China currency devaluation on that time. Nations that rely on export saw a drop in trade and a decline in foreign direct investment and also a cascade repercussion of defaulting loans. During the fourth quarter, the value of Chinese export and import dropped substantially from a 25% increase to a major reduction of negative 1.65% in value. After employment losses in China, many migrant workers have to return home. 15% of employees were affected. And after that, an economic stimulus package totaling up to 4 trillion yuan, like same to 586 billion dollar, have been announced by the government. Not just that, government said in 2008, in comparison to the US and Europe, it was rather enormous but it was put into place in hurry. 2009 was a record-breaking year for Chinese investment. Economy regained in strength. There was a 924.3 billion yuan in public investment in the national budget and which is 503.8 billion yuan more than the previous year budget, which is good for the China to start over and passing through a recession time. Next is the homogeneous society. In this part, we are discussing on the state-owned enterprises, which is SOEs, that no longer provided a cradle to grave care for their workers, which is the special thing like pensions, were no transferable or lost entirely. Heart clinic were replaced by a private clinic and the public hospital became one of the private sector. However, based on the thing that been implemented, China per capita income rose eight fold between 1980 and 2010. But economic development was uneven. 10% of the population earn 45% in the coastal area rich while rural area was still poor. China economic reform began more than a decade ago and have been intensified after the financial crisis. The Communist Party fit plenum approved the 11 five-year economic program in 2005. It aimed at building a harmonious society an effort to rebalance income distribution between urban and rural areas. Next is the HUKO system. When it was first implemented around 1950, the HUKO system was designed to keep a rural people engaged in farming, which is, in this part, is really good for the economics in agriculture. Wasn't until the mid 90s that several provinces began eliminating. Annual, quote, annual, annual quotas for switching from agriculture to non-agriculture activities. A large part of this realization took place in the inland and western zone. A few of province obliged migrants to give up all, all, all their land right in the village of origin. Not just that, 
10 million migrant laborers move to the cities every year, making Huku a major barrier. However, an exceptional joint editorial was published in March 2010 by 11 Chinese newspapers that defied party structure they call as NPC to abolish as, as quickly as possible. Next is about healthcare. The number of Chinese families with adequate health insurance in 2008 was very low. The majority of healthcare facilities were publicly owned, but they rely on revenue generating activities to stay afloat in the long run. As a result, the government set a, set a prices for high tech diagnostic service above the cost and allowed a 50% of profit margin on drugs. For our instance, antibiotics were prescribed to 75% of patients with a common cold. And not just that, over the next three years, China will invest an additional 850 billion, up to 125 billion insurance coverage will be expanded, with the goal of achieving a universal coverage by the end of this decade. With the aim for this is to public health service should receive more government funding, especially in low income areas. After, after that is about pensions. People were left with worthless or no pension after the iron rice bowl collapse. Coupled with rapid economic growth, the one child policy led to a drop in fertility rates. As a result, Hu Jiantao and Wen Jiabao government prioritized the creation of a new social security system, which is, but it doesn't stop there. Rural Chinese elders work longer than 10 years on average than their urban counterparts, who typically retire between 60 and 65 years old it was in 2005. The government enacted a major pension reform for city workers. On the whole, the system served as a guideline which was then adapted for each of thousand countries. Aside from that, the rate of contribution varied widely between municipal and province as well. A total of 12 million people were covered by rural pensions in 2008. Not just that, with each other, with each retire receiving an average of six dollar per month, there will be a gradual introduction of a brand new voluntary program over the next of the 12 years. A mere 70% of migrant workers, roughly 130 million, were covered by a retirement plan in the 2008. Next is about the banking, housing, and the yuan. Firstly, is banking. When it comes to banking in China, four large state owned banks control over 33 trillion yuan in total asset in 2009 between 21.4% and 26.1% according to the People Banks of China. China's four largest bank had non-performing loan in 2002 with a market capitaliz capitalization of 650 billion. The four largest banks were listed on the New York Stock Exchange in July 2010. Although the PBOC still set most interest rate including those on checking and saving accounts in 2010, the PBOC still set most lending interest rate. It is true that a number of foreign banks owned minority stake in Chinese companies, but their market share was less than 1% of the profits. Next is about housing bubbles. Numerous people feared that the excess liquidity had been used to purchase assets which will eventually cause the economy to become overheat because China's government had little debt and large foreign reserve. It was able to act as a safety net in case of an emergency. Banks did not have to rely on violent debt market for funding because they had a price of excess deposit. Using their high lending profit to replenish capital, Banks will also face a future bad debt problem with optimism. 
Next is about uh, real exchanging real exchange rate. There is uncertainty regarding the level of undervaluation for the yuan. For the yuan, the currency of China is may be undervalued by up to fifty percent depending on the country used as a benchmark, and the infl inflation and the inflation adjusted employed which have a various degrees of accuracy. The appreciation of the yuan, for example, by 10% will cause China annual growth rate to fall by 0.86%. Some researchers claim that it reflected the positive impact of other policies on growth, including the undervalued yuan. The, the lastly is Wen Jiabao plans for 2010, which is under this topic is focused on the on the type bands the people bank of china choose to allow the yuan to appreciate in value in a gradual manner which is when jiabo has advocate for more equal distribution of resources not just that additional growth in the service sector improvement in rural life and institution building and also cultivation of social unity. Lastly, despite this general social harmony, some major European and American companies didn't seem it to benefit. The second last slide is, I just put a table of focusing on the bank that being discussed. This is a table of the bank in the housing bank of the Yuan. From this table, we can see from 1997 to 2011, which is in this in this table, including consumer pricing, lending interest, and also deposit interest rate. In the table, we can see the inflation from 2008 to 2011. Next is about the diagram that show the real exchange rate that been discussed early in the in the slide before which is this is the exchange rate as we can see that the higher is the nominal exchange rate dollar that shift to the right words that's all from me thank you